Welcome to 2024. This past year has been interesting. Rates rising, falling, rising higher, not falling, definitely inconsistent. Not to mention inflation. And that's all I'll say about that. So as we enter into 2024, I wanted to do something a little different than everyone else and talk about a topic that matters if you're looking to purchase something this year. This isn't an encouragement to go out and buy something. It's more an introduction to a home buying philosophy that should help just about anyone that is interested in doing so. If this is a topic that rubs your fancy, hit that like button, maybe go ahead and subscribe. It's free, you can cancel at any time but it does help the channel reach more folks like yourself and help in the long term to keep content like this rolling out. Now hitch up your bootstraps and let's dive in, shall we? What's up, my name is Joshua Smith. I'm with the Home Agent Group. I wanna to talk to you about what you're up to and how we can expand together. I'm gonna be honest with you, and you can cut this in. <laughs> that was the highlight of our entire trip. How much house you can afford depends on a few factors. Whether you're looking for your first home to purchase, upgrading an existing home, or wanting to find that forever home, there are things that come along with a mortgage that you must consider and you may not be thinking about depending on your current situation. Of course, your mortgage amount is your first consideration, but that's not the last line item on the budget. Next comes taxes, which can vary in different cities and counties, not just state to state. So make sure you look at this and consider it. Also insurance. In, in the areas where I work, we have a number of waterways that touch properties. So some properties may require additional flood insurance as well. Next comes repairs and maintenance. If you're getting a bigger yard, who's mowing it? We bought a house two years ago that I love. It has the nice big mature trees all over the place, but I had to buy a new mower, a zero turn, just so I can get that thing done in one afternoon. Not only was that an expense, but the time is an expense. But if you're hiring someone to mow, how much does it cost in the area where you're mowing? Different areas have different landscaping rates. Look it up. That's why I'm mowing my own lawn. Existing homes will have a bit more upkeep, but even newer homes will have maintenance and plumbing, HVAC, appliances, any number of things that can make up day-to-day -day life. You can't just call the property manager or the landlord anymore. You're not renting. Other expenses could be HOA costs, home warranties if you choose to get one, cleaning or upgrades to the home, things like that. Now, here's the thing. Your mortgage, your taxes, your insurance, even some of these other expenses can be all rolled into or escrowed into one payment every month. And you're likely not going to change too much year over year, but in places like Texas, taxes can jump 50% in Texas. Actually, in Davidson County, where Nashville is in Tennessee, taxes went up 35% in one year. Granted, home values also went up during that time. So many folks that wanted to move were able to, they cashed in the equity that built up in that same time frame. Generally speaking though, this shouldn't be a common occurrence. During the home buying process, you can have the home inspected, and this will also help you estimate maintenance needs and therefore put some numbers on those costs, those other line items. Now, all that said, let's talk about budgeting for your purchase. How much you can afford. Now, I'm sure you've heard the 30% rule for rent. Uh, it basically states that you don't wanna spend more than 30% of your monthly income on your monthly rent. But this is an old theory. It's been adapted in a few new forms for modern life uh, where things like soaring school debt have become more of an issue. One more recent budgeting theory is the 50-30-20 budget where you want to spend half your after taxes monthly budget on things like housing, food, transportation. 30% would go to your wants, clothing, travel, hobbies, and the remaining 20% goes toward retirement planning, debt repayment, and savings. But another way to look at this, a nod to Graham Stephan, would be to back into this budget conversation, starting with the fixed non-negotiable things like food, transportation, debt repayment, insurance, anything you can't live without. Include 15 to 20% on top of that for savings, another 10% for miscellaneous spending, and whatever you have left over is what you have for housing. This will ensure that savings are happening, you're putting the goal of buying a home before your other spending. Now, if all that's too much to keep track of, another metric that I've heard of is to spend no more than 20% of your gross income on your rent or housing. And I guess at that point, just make sure that you're saving something for that down payment when you find the right house. But let's talk about mortgages again. None of this goes into how your lender will pre-approve your mortgage amount. Your lender just needs to see that any retail debt that you pay 
plus your mortgage is going to be less than around 45% of your monthly after-tax income. This includes student loans, car payments, credit cards. So if you make six grand a month after taxes, less 45% of this is 2,700. Say you spend around $500 a month on that existing debt, they should approve up to 2,200 for your mortgage amount. This also means that if you don't have any other existing debt, you can use the full 45% of your income in this scenario, again, up to $2,700 a month on a mortgage if you want to. I'm not gonna advise one way or another on this, but sometimes just because you can doesn't mean that you should. This is why I backed into this point at the end of this video. In many places in the US, it's less expensive to rent than to buy or hold a mortgage. So if money saving is most important to you in the short term, then renting may be a good option until you find a good enough deal to justify the cost. As an investor myself, it's also important to know the history of property values in the area that you might be buying in. Because if you can predict property value increases over time, then for all the reasons you want to own a home in the first place, that equity is going to make for a better investment of your funds than renting long term. It really does depend on your personal situation and feelings, but I'll end with one last thought on where 2024 will bring us according to the information that we have so far. The Fed has announced it plans to drop rates in 2024, 2025, and 2026 based on the past year. I don't know that we can rely on the existing information to persist through that whole time frame. But suffice it to say that if this is true, investments made now will only be made better with the opportunity to refinance in the future at a lower rate. Ultimately, there's no bad decision except one that goes unmade. If you're looking into a real estate purchase, it's always a good idea to identify your team, start doing your research, homework, and budgeting now so that you don't miss any opportunities that may arise. I partner with others myself, lenders, investors, mentors, even other agents that are like-minded and can help me keep an eye out for those deals that we can't pass up. Having a plan and a team in place is the best way to ensure that you can vet those opportunities and are ready to pull the trigger as they arise. I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next one.